Well, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, everyone, I guess. Um, kind of give you a quick update on what we're doing and where we're at. Uh, school started on the 25th, and uh, that first week was discretionary, and we had uh, a number of guys um, in the weight room, but they had to go through protocols, get COVID tested and stuff. And then we had our first workout on, uh, on Saturday, uh, last Saturday morning it was a good workout. And then we started the process really of winter conditioning on Monday, the first, and, uh, we'll have that through about the first week of, of March, and then we'll get into spring ball. So we're excited to have everybody back. Um, excited about, uh, some of the guys that, uh, have joined us at semester. Uh, we did, I uh, have two additions today, uh, Damien Alalio from Manhattan and uh, Desmond Purnell from uh, Topeka Hayden and excited about those two guys uh, to be able to join our program. And uh, I've had some other guys uh, join our program at semester that I'm sure you guys will ask about, but uh, excited to get uh, get back started here uh, this winter. All right, here with Kellis. Hey, Chris, good to see you again. Good to um, see you. <laughs> with, with, uh, when it comes to transfers, how much has your philosophy on taking those changed in the last year when the, the transfer market has just blown up? Yeah, I think it's going to change everybody a little bit. And I, I, we need to see how this full cycle goes and uh, when it uh, gets put into legislation. But um, we knew that with the amount of kids that, that we had lost, that we had to fill some roles and uh, I've talked to a lot of coaches throughout the country that were either in a similar boat as us or, or even potentially worse of, of lo losing more guys that um, um, we hope it's not a sign of, of, of the new times because you want to have guys retained and you want to have guys stay in your program. But the reality is um, it's out there. And so um, kids are going to explore. And so um, we, we made sure that we had um, enough scholarships uh, left or available that we could fill some immediate needs and immediate uh, roles. And so we'll see how this transpires over the next year and see if it's kind of a thing uh, that's going to stay. I've seen some people suggest that if, if it does stick around like this, then maybe it would be worth looking at um, not counting at least all transfers against the 25 max you can each year. What do you think about that idea? Kellis, there's a million things that are going on out there. Um, there's a lot I agree with. There's some I disagree with. Um, we've had a lot of conversations as, as head coaches uh, about upping that number uh, from 25. We got to be careful uh, so we don't get it such a big number that people oversign and just sign people to sign people. Um, so I, there's so much more work that's going to be done on this. And, and I think we still have to wait. Let's get through a full year of, of this. Um, and, uh, and kind of reevaluate, but, uh, uh, all those things I know are being talked about, uh, on a, on a daily basis and, and really, uh, for us coaches, when we get together with our meetings, we're talking about them all the time. I also want to ask about Daniel, the tight end you just added, I, uh, I'm not confident enough to uh, pronounce his last name yet, but what, what drew you to him? What kind of ceiling do you think he could have next season? Well, um, coach Tui was with him at USC. So that, that started it out. And um, so Tui knew, knew of Daniel, knew of the family. And um, we had good success with Briley. And um, uh, Briley had good success with, with, uh, within our system. And so um, we have a couple of tight ends coming back that uh, had some uh, winter surgery. And so we weren't going to have those guys. And we're always looking to continue to improve the football team. And so that was in one of the areas that we were looking to, uh, to add someone. And um, Daniel was able to um, come here and, and we'll see what he can do. Um, big kid that can run really well. And, and once again, we're just in the first week, but uh, excited about <clears throat> what he can add. John. I guess to, to follow up on that, Chris, just with the injury history that he has, how confident are you that he'll, he'll be in good shape and be able to stay healthy for you. Well, that's the, that's the hope. That's the plan. Um, getting him in the, the training room, getting him um, out there running around. And um, you know, there's, there's a, a history uh, of, of an injury there that uh, we're well aware of and, and our, our training staff is as well, as well. but uh, um, we feel confident and visit with the docs that um, he'll be a guy that uh, uh, can get through it and, and be a, uh, an impact player for us. 
this in part comes from just an observation for myself. I guess you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but how much more of a focus this year with the transfers in particular that you brought in was just the, the kind of fit that they would be, how they'd fit the culture uh, here, just based on, on last year, having a bunch of transfers and how the year ended. Well, that was the number one thing for us as a staff is to get to, to know these guys as individuals, um, get to know them as people. Could they um, help our locker room? Could they come in and, and, and fit what we're asking the guys to do? And we felt we had a home run on each guy as far as uh, the maturity level, um, the hunger, so to speak, the, the chip on their shoulder to say, I want to come in here and, and, and be a part of Kansas State, not just uh, transfer and play a year and, and see where I land in, at the next level of the, of, of the draft, but to come in here and make an impact um, on the field, but uh, make an impact off the field, make an impact in the locker room, make an impact with the younger players, um, be, be leaders, whether that's leaders just by example, uh, or we've got a couple guys that we think are pretty good vocal guys that uh, it was a huge piece to us bringing guys in that we knew would be uh, a fit with us. And that's where all of us coaches were involved in uh, each of the guys that we brought in. It wasn't just the position coach and myself. Uh, we had a lot of Zooms with uh, families, a lot of Zooms with multiple staff members just to make sure that uh, um, they were going to fit the profile that was so important to us. With Brents and Yeast in particular, what are they going to add to the secondary for you guys? Well, uh, Julius, um, Ju, what we call him, is um, at great length, exceptional size, has played a, a number of games at the uh, Big Ten level and um, gives us that big corner that uh, we're so excited about. You know, he's 6'3", 200 pounds and can really run and um, can change direction and uh, uses his hands well. So that's going to help us. And then I'm excited about Russ. He played a ton of games at, uh, at Louisville and a uh, really, really smart guy, uh, understands uh, everything about the game of football. He had a, a dad that's uh, taught him an awful lot. Uh, that's a college coach that was a phenomenal uh, college and professional player. And so he's got a great pedigree there. And Russ can play multiple spots. He can play either safety. He can play the nickel. Uh, and so we like his versatility. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. You bet. Derek. Yeah, Coach, by my count, you still have a few spots left to tackle if, if you want to do that. Are you still planning on adding more? And is it going to be more from the transfer circuit still or high school level? Um, we'll kind of play it out this uh, spring. We wouldn't be adding anybody uh, for this second semester. And I think that's important for us as a staff to see where we're at with some of the young guys through spring ball, where we're at uh, positionally, um, offensively and defensively, and then uh, – reevaluate it uh, at the end of spring, you know, whether it's high school guys or transfers, we're kind of open either way. If, if we're able to get out in, in April, that might be able to help um, be able to, you know, eyeball some guys, whatever you want to say, just to maybe get around some guys. Cause that's the hardest thing right now is um, you're just zooming guys and there's not a lot of film out there uh, on people. And, and so we know we have a few extra spots, but uh, they're not earmarked for any position. And then uh, for spring football, in terms of the plans, are, are you tempted to kind of push back the start at all just to maybe, you know, get towards the end of the, the COVID era, so to speak, or to have recruits visit for those practices too, possibly? Yeah, we've talked about all that stuff, Derek. I, I wish I could say we were going to push it based on COVID or hold it, but that, that would be crazy to think. And then you push it and say, well, you push it into another bad spell. So um, we have a pretty good plan visiting with Coach Dawson and the strength staff of what we want to do as far as a, a, a period of time that we're going to work out the guys prior to spring ball. And then we're going to roll through spring ball uh, most of March and, and, and a little bit of April. And that still gives Coach Dawson and his staff some time on the back end before the second semester ends to get another uh, four to five week period with the guys. Um, and so that's that's the plan right now. Uh, you don't want to push it. I'm not a big fan of pushing it till late April because if you get uh, an injury or something, it's just that more much more time you're taking away from summer. And speaking of those injuries, I don't know if you have enough information to share, but just where at is Skylar Thompson, TJ Smith, and Shabastin Taylor right now? Um, TJ's pretty far along with his knee injury. He's doing a lot of things. Uh, non, you know, he's running around, doing a lot of exercises. He won't be available for spring. He might be able to do some individual. 
Um, sea bass, because it was you know a lot later in the season, will miss all of spring. But I know his rehabilitation is going well. Uh, I know that Skyler is beginning to to soft toss uh, a football, not just a uh, a nerf ball, but a, but a football. And so I know that he's ahead of schedule uh, from what uh, the docs have, have told him and have told me. And so uh, he's got a great mindset right now. Um, he's doing a great job leading for us, helping the wide receivers and and quarterbacks. But uh, uh, I fully believe he'll be cutting it loose with whatever he wants to do um, by mid-April or early May and have a full summer. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. You bet. Else. We haven't talked to you since Skyler said he was coming back. Can you walk us through that process? Did you have to recruit him? Did he have to recruit you? What happened? Well, he and I have a really good relationship. And um, I, I think him getting involved and staying involved throughout the whole season was really important for him uh, to see a different side of it, being in the press box, helping out uh, Mass, helping out Coach Klein. Uh, and he has aspirations of, of playing at the next level, and he should because he's a talented player. Uh, but he needed another year if that's the case. He couldn't probably throw for a pro day and all those things. So um, I think deep down, I knew he wanted to come back. Uh, deep down, he knew that we wanted to have him come back. But, uh, you know, like we had talked about in December or November or whenever we had those conversations, I wasn't going to do anything until our season was over. I didn't think that was fair to to any of the guys to say, hey, you've talked to this guy, but not me. And and so I waited till the end of the season to talk to all those guys. And um, but uh, I was pretty, pretty confident uh, that Skyler wanted to come back. And, and he he knew that we wanted to have him back. How, just how big is his addition in your mind? Well, it's it's huge. And the fact you have a, a guy that started an awful lot of games that uh, has uh, started a lot of big games, has won big games, uh, a guy that uh, has been through the fire. He knows our system. Um, he's a great leader. Um, you know, the kids look up to him. He works hard. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to have a, a quarterback coming back. It's good to have two quarterbacks coming back. That's a great thing. It's going to make Will so much better as, as also. All right. Thanks, Chris. You bet. John. Yeah, the topic of Skyler, I mean, maybe a fairly silly question here, but what, what was your reaction to him changing his number to uh, to number seven, which obviously has quite a bit of significance here? You know, I just saw that today, in fact, and, um, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, his reasoning behind it, I thought was even better. And um, everything happens for a reason. Him playing next year at Kansas State happens for a reason. And so um, I know anything with Skyler is going to be well thought out uh, something he's going to evaluate, something he's going to share with his family to decide what the best decision is. And so uh, I, I was uh, happy for him. And when we talked with uh, Jake Rubley the other day, he said he had already been planning on redshirting. Is that something that you had discussed with him? Was that kind of the plan all along here? You know, um, who knows? Uh, you know, you would, we could have said last year at this time, you probably were redshirting Will Howard, aren't you? And somebody could have said yes, and look what happened. So um, everybody has an opportunity to, to help us out. Everybody has an opportunity to compete. And um, we need more guys uh, to find a role, whatever that role may be. And, and um, so I'm excited for Jake and, and for him to learn. And uh, when his time comes, uh, take advantage of the opportunity. Appreciate it. That's there you go. Hey, Coach, a uh, little strange question here, but after what everyone's been through the last almost 11 months, and uh, I know coaches love spring football, but how much, how eager are you for this spring football? I think all of us are e eager for spring ball. Uh, I've talked to an awful lot of coaches throughout the country, and um, as and everybody shared the same sentiment that I did. It was the most difficult fall they'd ever, they've ever, they've ever gone through, they've ever had to handle. And um, uh, although we don't know where the spring is going to be as far as um, missing guys with the virus and close contact, uh, guys have a better handle on it, but you hope it still is, is a little bit less than what we did in the fall. I think all of us are excited. Uh, to be back and, and getting around the guys for, for winter workouts and, and watching those guys grow and develop. And that's the thing that we miss a, a, 
quite a bit of last year, you know, from March 1st on is all this development and growth uh, in the weight room, on the practice field, in the meeting room. And that's what uh, you can tell our guys once they came back and we started our workouts, I mean, they're hungry. They're excited to be back with their, with their, with their teammates, with their brothers and, and just playing and, and working out. And um, it's something that you take for granted. Um, but uh, I don't think people will take for granted the opportunity to be around players, the opportunity to be around coaches anymore. And I know ideally you'd like to have Skyler for available for spring practice, but uh, that's not going to happen. So how good, of, how much of a benefit is it with your promising young quarterbacks that they get all the snaps, they get all the reps throughout the spring? Yeah. Well, it'd be great to have Skyler back just so he can get that confidence and he can, you know, get that rustiness off him, but that won't happen. So, uh, and we have a number of guys that are out for spring because of the same reason that have played a lot of football here. And so those quarterbacks are going to have a great chance to, to take rep after rep after rep. We're going to, we're going to find a way to do two ends and go do our double reps. Even if that we've got to be really creative because we need to just practice. We need a lot of guys to take an awful lot of reps and, when we challenged the guys when they came back, this is going to be really an uncomfortable winter and an uncomfortable spring. Um, and uh, too many too many guys, coaches included, have got to get out of a comfort zone, and, and we need to be uncomfortable. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. Uh, but that's what our guys want. That's what our guys are looking forward to. So uh, we're going to have competitive matchups at every spot, and, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun this spring. Tell us, ask you about the transfer portal and your evolving feelings about it. As we kind of get through this major cycle of it, um, do you feel like in some ways it's dangerous? I mean, it, it's almost romantic to go into the transfer portal and guys now are facing reality. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I think a lot of guys are getting a lot of poor advice, unfortunately. And, and that's where we as coaches talked a bunch over Christmas break of building trust, building relationships. It's it's hard to play as a young player. You know, Carson Wentz sat for three years and never once did he think about transferring. He thought about the opportunity of when he got his time, he was going to make the most of that opportunity. That's that's hard anymore. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that are going to do what, what Carson did. You hope there are, but um, it, it's difficult. And uh, I don't know if it's going to get a whole lot better, Fitz. I, I think for the next few years, um, People are going to continue to get poor advice and jump in the portal and then realize it's maybe not what they're looking for as far as the opportunities they have or they leave and go somewhere else. And boy, it wasn't as bad at school X, school Y, not just Kansas State, but anywhere you look at to say, man, maybe I didn't have it as, as bad as maybe somebody told me I had it. And that's the challenge for all of us as coaches is to build relationships with these kids, build the trust with these guys. Um, be honest with them, uh, but also help those guys. I mean, you, you can't just leave and quit something uh, in a job if you've got to take care of your family um, when you're 25, 35 years old and, and life's difficult. You've got to make sure and, and uh, be able to persevere through tough times. I've seen some of your young guys, young coaches, excuse me, that uh, have found jobs and moved on. Um, any changes in your core 10 assistant coaches this season? No, not as if this time um, and happy for uh, Drew Little and Stanton uh, Weber, both uh, quality control guys for us, got jobs. And I'm always trying to help guys in the profession as people have helped me when I was younger, uh, growing up uh, in the profession. We did make one switch. We moved Coach Mess from tight ends and fullbacks to wide receivers and Jay Ray from uh, wide receivers to tight ends and fullbacks. And, and the main reason that I did that was I want the play caller, who's Coach Mess, obviously, to be more actively involved in the passing game. That was something we talked about before Christmas as an offensive staff. Uh, we sat on it, came back after Christmas, had more lengthy conversations and uh, um, had nothing to do with the personnel or anything like that. It had everything for me to say, I want the play caller to be more involved on a daily basis at practice with the passing game. Very good. Thank you, coach. You bet. Got two more hands raised. We'll do those starting with Kellis. Kind of just a housekeeping thing here, but are you guys still testing three days a week, same schedule as during the season? We're, we're now down to uh, one time a week. Uh, it's a PCR test, so it's a, an accurate test that uh, we do over at Lafine, but uh, we're uh, one time a week. And 
um, we, we still are getting uh, a couple of positives and, and then the close contact. So we're, we're not out of the woods by any means. All right. Do, do, you, do you have any optimistic thing in your mind of when things might get back to normal for you in that area? <laughs> Uh, no, I, uh, <laughs> not a doc on that one. So, um, when they do, they do. And, and we've just got to continue to push forward with whoever is available and, and realize and not get frustrated. Like it could easily frustrate you in the fall when you're missing kids for, for game after game. Now we're missing kids for development after development and practice and workouts that, you know, it's, it's, it's not over with. And so we have to, uh, be cognizant of that and we have to do a great job with those kids that are missing time because I know that the mental health part of that is really difficult on these guys to start a workout and then be down for 14 days all right thanks Chris you bet all right last one here from Ryan hey uh, Chris I'm in a really bad service area so I'm hoping you're going to be able to hear me okay um I wanted to ask about because obviously it's a big deal for me here working at the Mercury. What what drew you to Damien? It's always a big deal when you sign a local kid. Uh, I can hear you well, and uh, that's a fortunate thing for me uh, because my son plays with him at Manhattan High, and I was able to watch an awful lot of those football games. And that was the benefit of being a dad and not a coach. Is I, I got to see a, a kid uh, dominate the line of scrimmage, have an unbelievable motor. Um, you can tell he loved the game. Um, you can tell that his teammates, uh, really enjoyed him. He was happy for teammates. It was, uh, I mean, that kid's a winner, uh, a flat out winner. And, uh, with his work ethic, his motor and those things, I know he'll be a great fit here and have tremendous, tremendous success. And then I look at Desmond Purnell, I was able to go watch Manhattan play those guys and I thought he was the best kid on the field that day. And I uh, really piqued my interest and kept watching uh, on clips that were sent to me. But when I saw him live, I said, there's a guy that will have an impact on our program. And so it's a great thing about being a dad of a high school player is you get those opportunities. You've already been asked, Chris, about the other three transfers. So what, what drew you to Eric and, and to Timmy? Um, Eric, uh, really mature guy, um, has had a lot of adversity in, in his life, uh, bounced around at a couple of schools. Um, but uh, I, I know the respect that the, the coaches and the players had for him at Utah State, and I can see it already um, as he's been here, how mature he is, a really physical kid that can run. And then um, with, with Tim Horn, we needed to, you know, we lost uh, Drew Wiley, big, big force in there, and we needed another a big long body that's a six five kid that uh, has really good range, um, uses his hands well, and uh, is a physical player. So, um, you know, all of all those guys that we talked about um, kind of fill a need for us that uh, um, we hope that they're able to come in and, and contribute right away. I just got two more quick things, real quick. Uh, first, you know, we got to talk to Jake last week. Uh, he seems like an extremely, extremely sharp kid. What's already impressed you about him since he got there? Um, just the fact that uh, he's a great team guy, um, wants to get to know uh, all the freshmen, wants to get to know all the older guys, um, is very humble, um, knows he's got a long ways to go, uh, really good work ethic, smile on his face, great body language, works hard, encourages his his teammates. That's what you're looking for out of everybody. And when you have that, at the quarterback position, that's a, a pretty unique trait for a freshman. And, and then last thing, I know as, as the season kind of came down the stretch last year, you mentioned that, you know, you want to see the players take more accountability and ownership in the program. Have you seen that since the end of that Texas game? Well, uh, it's hard to say. Um, we're challenging them again because we just got back here end of January. Everybody needed a, a about a four to five week break there and to clear their mind and recharge their batteries. And, uh, um, I know this, I'm excited about the, the crew that showed back up on, on January 25th because um, they're hungry, they're ready to compete, they're, they're, they know what the standard is, um, they need to hold each other to the standard and uh, um, it's, they cannot be afraid to uh, hold a teammate accountable and uh, we've done a nice job in the first week of, of some of the things we maybe had issues with in the fall of missing some things, we haven't missed those things right now which tells me we got guys that are hungry to, uh, to be successful, not only on the field, but uh, what you do off the field. I've never been around a team that does 
silly stuff off the field, whether it's classwork, nutrition, strength and conditioning, and been lights out on the field. It just doesn't work that way. You know, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And if you do things well off the field, usually it translates to success on the field. Hey, hey, thanks, Chris. I know the Centennial League appreciates you signing Damien and, and Desmond, getting them some publicity here at K-State. Absolutely. We want the local guys. Thanks, Ryan.